Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In this video, we're going to be discussing a very important pathway in any health discipline, whether it's medicine, physical therapy, or whatnot, and that is what's called the RAS system. You can see the RAAS here in the title of the video. And what it stands for is Renin Angiotensin Aldosterone System. And what this system allows for is when the body has a decreased blood pressure, it allows a negative feedback loop to raise the blood pressure. And that's what we would expect from a negative feedback loop, right? If we have some initial stimulus, well, the outcome should be moving that parameter in the opposite direction. So let's start up here at the initial stimulus and work our way through this complex looking diagram. And hopefully you'll see that it's actually not very complicated. It actually makes a lot of sense. Our initial stimulus is going to be either low blood volume or low blood pressure. Now one thing to understand is that whenever the blood volume is low, that always means we have a low blood pressure. These two things are proportional to one another. If the blood volume were high, the blood pressure would also be high. But our initial stimulus is low blood volume, and there could be a number of things that cause this. We could have some severe dehydration. Maybe we were in the desert too long and we haven't consumed any fluids. We could have a sodium deficiency. Um, remember, water follows salt, so if we have low sodium, we also have low water content. Or it could be a bleeding episode where we're hemorrhaging and losing blood and therefore losing blood volume. So whenever we have that decrease in blood volume, that's automatically going to mean we have a decreased blood pressure. Those two things always go together. Now within the kidney, we have a cluster of cells referred to as the juxtaglomerular apparatus. And within that apparatus, there are some cells that are called juxtaglomerular cells, often called JG cells for short. Now when these JG cells sense this decreased blood pressure, they release an enzyme into the blood. And this enzyme is called renin. Now one thing about renin, this is not important for the function of the RAS pathway, but you might see in some sources they'll refer to this as a hormone. Renin is not a hormone, it is an enzyme, and we'll see that in just a minute. Now coming over here to the liver, the liver manufactures many proteins, one of which is angiotensinogen. This is an inactive protein and it does nothing right now. It's in your blood circulating as we speak. Anytime you see the suffix inogen or ogen, that implies that the protein is in an inactive form. So the liver makes it, but there's always some level of angiotensinogen in your blood right now. It's just not doing anything. But let's suppose that these JG cells release renin into the blood, and it acts on angiotensinogen and converts it into angiotensin 1, which is a peptide that circulates in the blood. Now, circulating the blood, eventually angiotensin 1 is going to reach the lungs because, of course, there's blood flow that goes through the lungs. And there's an enzyme in the lungs called ACE, which is angiotensin-converting enzyme. You might have heard of an ACE inhibitor. That would be a drug that inhibits this enzyme. And we'll be covering more on inhibition and other medications in the next video once we understand this. But when angiotensin 1 gets to the lungs, ACE converts it into angiotensin 2. That makes sense based on this name. It's an angiotensin converting enzyme. It converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Now angiotensin 2 is the active or the mature form of the angiotensin hormone. So angiotensin 2 is a peptide hormone that's going to have several functions. Coming over here, one of these functions is to act directly on certain cells of the adrenal cortex. Now the adrenal cortex makes many hormones, but one of them that's important is the hormone aldosterone. So when angiotensin II acts on specifically the cells of the zona glomerulosa of the adrenal cortex, it triggers them to dump aldosterone into the blood. Now aldosterone is able to act directly on the kidneys, specifically in the collecting ducts of the nephron. Okay, so let's actually go to this picture. We'll look at this more in another video when we talk about these drugs, but I want you to look at the general structure of the nephron. Up here we have the glomerulus, then here's the proximal convoluted tubule, and then here's my big loop of Henle. So this part would be the descending loop, here's the ascending loop. Then I have the distal convoluted tubule, and then over here the terminal part of it is the collecting duct. 
Now you'll notice there's a protein right here. It's this yellow protein. And these proteins are specifically found in the collecting duct cells. And what they do is they facilitate reabsorption of sodium into the blood. Okay? So when sodium is reabsorbed into the blood, water follows that sodium. Remember our key here, water follows salt. So the more sodium that I reabsorb, the more water that's going to osmose through and follow it. Okay? Also, this protein facilitates the secretion of potassium ions and hydrogen ions into the filtrate, which eventually go into urine. So we get rid of or excrete potassium and hydrogen ions. Now here is aldosterone, usually abbreviated aldo. Now aldosterone actually upregulates this protein, meaning when there's more aldosterone, we get more of this transporter. And if there's more of this transporter, we reabsorb more sodium and we reabsorb more water. We also end up excreting more potassium and excreting more hydrogen ions. So coming back here, if I have more aldosterone, what's going to happen to the amount of water reabsorption? There's more water reabsorbed into the blood, therefore there's a greater blood volume. And if there's a greater blood volume, what did we say that translates to? A greater blood pressure. So our initial stimulus back over here was decreased blood volume and decreased blood pressure. Our outcome is increased blood volume and increased blood pressure. So this is a great example of a negative feedback loop where we reverse the direction of the original stimulus. Now back to angiotensin II here. We've been talking about aldosterone. But angiotensin II has another function, and what it's actually able to do is cause vasoconstriction of arterioles. So basically constricting blood vessels. And what do we know about blood vessel constriction in the periphery? Well, when you constrict blood vessels, their diameter decreases, and so blood pressure in that region will increase. And so angiotensin II is able to act directly on the arterioles that lead to capillary beds and cause vasoconstriction, which causes the blood pressure to go up. So not only can aldosterone, independently of angiotensin II, increase blood pressure, but the angiotensin II can directly act on the arterioles to vasoconstrict them, which also increases blood pressure. And so this is the basis of the RAS system. We have renin, angiotensin II, and aldosterone, and collectively they can take a decreased blood volume and decreased blood pressure, and they can increase it to normal levels. Now, obviously in some cases, blood pressure gets out of whack. And the blood pressure can get out of whack for a couple of reasons. One uh, can be independent of blood volume. Or in another case, it can be with increased blood volume. And so there's different ways that we can decrease blood pressure using medications. And so some of those medications act on different portions of the nephron. You can see that the thiazides act here at the distal convoluted tubule. Loop diuretics act somewhere on the loop of Henle. We're not going to cover that in this video. That will actually be the next video. And so we'll use our understanding of the RAS system and the nephron to understand the mechanisms of actions of the various drugs to help treat blood pressure. So make sure to join us in that video. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.